we'll be able to fellowship even more. So <laughs> it's great to see all of you here and just to be able to worship with you this morning. We're very excited about that. If you will, please stand and turn in your hymnals to number 171. We're going to open the service this morning with There's Something About That Name. Good morning. Good morning. Glad you're here this morning as we worship the Lord our God. I'm Jeremy Squires, the lead pastor here at Good Shepherd, and we are glad you are here this morning. We are glad you're also here watching us online from wherever you might be. Comment, like, or love. And these few things are things I'm leading in today, but Pastor Louise is leading most of our service today, and we look forward to her bringing the word and bringing prayer this morning and all the other things. But a few announcements to make this morning as we look at our bulletin and think about all the things that are going on. First of all, our last summer movie night for Wednesday, God's Not Dead 2 or 3, is going to be at 6.30 in the chapel, so please join us for that last one. Today is also blessing of our backpacks, of our students, of ourselves, and we'll be doing that a little later on uh, during the joys and the celebrations and the service. Then also we have our, it's the end of summer, so we have our end of summer block party. So that's how we start things off. So on the 11th at 5 o'clock, we'll gather together and have hot hamburgers and hot dogs and all the fixins and Jenga giant games outside and karaoke and Hawaiian shaved ice and cotton candy and whatever else you want to throw in there. So um, please come out and join us for that and be able to celebrate as we get back in the swing of things and get ready to start Wednesday night Grow Back, our Wednesday night uh, program and for children, youth, and adults. That begins on the 14th. So it's all starting to come together and all of those things that are happening you'll also see on your insert. You can see everything that's going on, all of our schedule, and dinner, dinner returns with Uncle Dude, and all of those things happening at the same time. So those are some amazing things that are going on there. Then we also are going to begin a new uh, Cub Scouts are happening too. Spaghetti Supper and Silent Auction. Is this in the bulletin somewhere, anywhere? No, that's what I thought. All right. Spaghetti one, Pack 125, Spaghetti Supper and Silent Auction. 
And uh, so our Cub Scout Pack 125 meets in this very room and throughout the whole building need our support. So if you like spaghetti and you like silent auctions, you get two for one. So it's perfect. So come out and be a part and support them in all they're doing as well. And then our sermon series starts next week on knowing our God. You know about God, but do you really know God? And God actually stands for three different things in this case. And it's a bracelet that I've been wearing for the last two years since I went to the Outback with Hannah. And we're going to talk about what those three things mean. And we actually might have a chance to get bracelets of our own. Uh, but those three things are really important if you're going to know about God and how to live with God. So we start all that next week as we gather together once again. So some of, some of the things that are happening throughout the course of this, our prayer list obviously is on here as well. And as we think about all these things this morning, let's take all this in our hearts this morning as we gather together and get ready to prepare ourselves to worship God. join me in our call to worship this morning with it, which is found in your bulletin instead of on the screen so I hope you have one have you faithfulness in Christ are you resolved to devote yourself wholly to God and God's work All right, let's take this time to greet each other this morning yeah very <laughs>
continue in worship this morning with number 130 in our hymnals, God Will Take Care of You. Prayer and confession is in your bulletin. And I'd like us all to be of one heart and one mind and read the prayer of confession in unison. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. May the almighty and merciful God Grant us remission of all, all our sins, true, true repentance, repentance amendment of life, and, and the grace and consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, in a world of change, you placed eternity in our hearts and gave us power to discern good from evil. Grant us sincerity that we may persistently seek the things that endure refusing those which perish, and that amid things vanishing and deceptive. We may see the truth steadily, follow the light faithfully, and grow ever richer in that love which is the life of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. As we celebrate this morning and come to a time of joys and celebrations, we uh, look forward to blessing our backpacks here in a minute, but there are a couple other things to take note of as well. Uh, first of all, we uh, had an opportunity, even though it was a sad time, to be able to celebrate the life of Brent McDonald. Uh, Brent was only 53, uh, Jewel's son, and uh, he went to sleep peacefully without pain, but never woke up uh, just from going to sleep. And uh, no parent ever have to outlive their child. 
and uh, so some of you know that feeling and uh, just pray for Jewel and for Dale his brother and Terry but we did celebrate his life and he will be his ashes will be spread on the water just like he loved to do and be fishing and thank you so much for your support people who were there and for those who brought food to the house we appreciate all of those things as well we also had a chance this week to celebrate uh, giving out the backpacks that happened uh, this past uh, week and a half and so we were able together to put together 212 backpacks so give yourselves a hand for that and give a hand to God for that and uh, so and then Kim and Sarah and Sarah and Robert are our new uh, serve chairs as Kim begins to move out of that and they went out and gave them out that's the principal at uh, Jean Brown Keith uh, I forgot his last name Garrett Carrick Perrick Keith Perrick and then they also went to of course uh, George Winton and George Winton ran uh, Rhonda Roush is still there as the principal, and their car was full of backpacks, and they also took them over to the Sumner County, uh, the guidance office, and when they got there, the entire basketball team, as well as the principal, Joe Schaefer, uh, unloaded them for them. That's the whole basketball team at that middle school, so they, come, they came and helped. So thank you so much for your help in doing all of that and getting those bags out to everyone, so that was a, an amazing piece as well. So we're gonna we're gonna celebrate here in a second backpacks, but so I want you to understand it isn't just for students and teachers and that sort of thing. Bev, you're coming up too, and you know if you work in a school or you're some way related to the school. In a second, if you'd like to pray over one of the students that's up here and all of that, and actually someone said, well, can I have a tag? Yes, you can have a tag. If you have a bag, you can have a tag, and it doesn't matter what you use it for, and so you weren't the only one, Stephen, so, uh, <laughs> so there were others, but that's the whole thing. The whole thing is, who doesn't want a blessing, and who doesn't want to be able to start off in a new year in a new way? So I want to invite all the students to come up, all the teachers, administrators, those cooking all the wonderful food. If you're involved in ministry here at the church and children's ministry and involved in youth ministry, did I cover it all? Come on up, I want you to kneel at these rails here. And while we're doing that, uh, everybody's gathering up. Parents, come up behind your kids, and you can pray over them. Other people who want to pray over others who are up here can come up here, and everybody else will lift a hand towards them. There you go. Everybody needs a hand to hold on to. I believe that's a song. Hmm. Come on up. Yeah, come on up. All right. Let's pray together. Lift your hands up towards everybody who's up here. And, oh God, today we gather to celebrate the beginning of a new school year. It is a day filled with joy and excitement as well as uncertainty and wonder. This whole week will be like that. God of knowledge and wisdom, we pray to you for all schools that they may be lively centers for learning and new discovery in the pursuit of goodness. We pray also for our places of work that our time laboring may be fruitful and enriching. As students begin the year, give them open minds and open hearts to learn to experience more fully the majesty of the world you have created. May this year be full of promise for them and for their teachers as together they experience new beginnings and fresh starts. Enable them to grow in knowledge and wisdom during this school year and all the days of their lives. Now, O oh God, bless these backpacks and these totes and these briefcases and the children and the youth and adults who carry them as they begin yet another year of school. Give them peace when they feel nervous, focus when they feel distracted, energy when they feel tired. Open their minds to the lessons they will learn both inside and outside the classroom. Help them to make friends that build one another up and be friends to those who need them. Guide them in making good choices as they grow in wisdom and maturity. Be ever present with them in the classroom, in the kitchen, on the school bus, on the playground, and at home. May they feel your loving care in all they do. And Lord, for the teachers and administrators and all those who work in our schools, bless those in the ministry of teaching future generations. As they embark on a new school year, grant them energy and passion and discipline and endurance for their daily tasks. Infuse their classrooms with an atmosphere of care and mutual respect that all interactions there will be bathed in patience, understanding, 
Help their lessons to grow pupils in both knowledge and character. And help us all to support the work these teachers do to build up our community and our future. In the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now get a tag for your bag. I'm going to copyright that, by the way. A tag for your bag. A tag for your bag. You can put this on your bag. There you go. Have a tag for your bag. You have a bag? Have a tag. You want a briefcase or anything? Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. You can get up and return to your seats, and thank you so much. And let's applaud these folks starting off their new journeys. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. New beginnings. And, and there's one thing that, uh, so in the midst of those joys and celebrations, and we also want to catch any birthdays. Am I having a birthday this week? Brent, you're having a birthday? Happy birthday, Brent. And somebody's, Richard having a birthday too? Last Monday, okay. Anniversaries, anybody have an anniversary? Leanne, anniversary, you and Michael? Eight years, okay, all right. All right, we have 12 years of what we were celebrating down in Huntsville uh, past, uh, this past weekend, so. You had a birthday, when, last October? When was it? <laughs> When was it really? May 9th, yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> Keep celebrating it. Keep celebrating it. So I don't know if, you, if, you, if you've checked into things and it happened so quick, but we've had now several mass shootings in the last uh, 36 hours. Plus a, another thing that happened in Milwaukee where peaceful marchers were actually tried to be mowed down by a car. And uh, so these things happen in... in, in Prayers don't seem to really cut it when it comes down to prayers and thoughts. And I don't have any answers, and i got to be honest with you, I don't really trust our elected officials to do anything on any side. And there's so much belief that's different, but yet we still just see it one after another, one after another. But I do think it's important for us to, to begin to change hearts, and it happens one at a time, and I don't know how that happens in the long run, and, and I don't know what the answers are, but I do think know that it's important for us to stop and to pause and to pray for all those who've lost their life. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning in a time of focusing on those in El Paso and Dayton, Ohio and Milwaukee. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, these last 24 hours have been horrific. Someone in El Paso shot and killed 20 people and wounded 26 more at a Walmart. They were just shopping. In Milwaukee, peaceful folks were marching in an anti-violence rally when someone sometime tried to plow through them with a car. They were marching for peace. And but a few hours ago, at least nine people are dead and more than a dozen are wounded after someone opened fire in downtown Dayton, Ohio. They were just partying and celebrating life. We know prayers aren't enough, O oh God, but we often forget the most important part of prayer, our conversation with you, is for us to be still, to be quiet, and listen to what you are saying to us, as well as to hear your children who are crying out. We don't know each other, O oh God. We seem not to care to know each other. At times it seems we demonize each other. We repent now of our hard hearts and ugly words. Forgive our sins of commission, and especially our sins of omission. Help us to be still and to be quiet and to listen, and then go forth to do something to love and to heal and to protect and to cherish our communities. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we ask these things, and we spend now a moment of silence to remember those who have been lost.
gracious God, help our elected officials to come together to figure this out. Help us to support mental health. Help us to find all the different avenues in the past that need to work together so we can begin to move past this violence and this non-caring for each other. We're all human. We all believe the same. We all live the same lives. We all are loved by you. Lord, pour this hate out of us and pour your love into us. As we pray, as our Father taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
What is God saying to you right this very minute? You've read what's coming up in your bulletin. You know some of the things I'm going to say. Ask God what it is that you're supposed to do and give to the people of this church, the people of this community, and people around the world. Because the Methodist Church serves churches and people around the world. And so it's with us being here that we know what God has to say to us. And we're going to just listen, and then we're going to just give. For we are indeed God's people. Will the ushers come forward? come to you. We bring our gifts, our presents. Lord, we bring you all that we are, that we would just be yours fully, and that would, we would worship you with steadfast love. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you the glory, and all of God's people said, amen. You know, one of the things we give to God is knowing that we are here today. And that means fill out the little card if you already haven't, so that we will know that your presence is here with God. And now, the little children and the big children can go upstairs and have a ball. You? That would be nice if you want to know the truth. <laughs> You know, we all have a children in, a child inside us. I don't know if you know that or not. But there is a, pr a particular kind of psychology that you draw three circles and you make two 
different figures. They look like snowmen. And when the top ones are the parents, the middle one is an adult, and the bottom one is a child. And you can analyze every conversation you have by looking at the um, way these two converse. For example, um, Pastor Jeremy and I just had a funny um, communication. And so it definitely wasn't parent to parent. And it's certainly not parent to child, because I'm not going to let him treat me like a child. <laughs> but it was child to child. We were having a good time. And I think we need to remember that whenever we're with anyone and whenever we're talking to ourselves, because it's important that we know who we're talking with and what we're saying. And so today, I think there's an eight-letter word found, in many, found many times in the Old Testament and the New Testament. You probably heard it in some of the music and songs we've already sung, or you can identify it with a guess. What do you think that eight-letter word is? No? Faith, faithful. Who said that? Oh, the whole side here. Okay. <laughs> faithful, absolutely. You know, it's always interesting to explore the meaning of words and the use of words. We also want to know the meaning and actions of the words we're talking about. How many times have you said to somebody, hello, or hello? You get a different response from the way you speak with each other, the way you communicate with each other. And when I think about faithful, we first think about God, Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit being faithful to us. For example, the children of Israel during their wilderness journey had to depend on God every single day. Why? Because they needed to eat, and God provided manna every single morning. And it was provided for the people because you couldn't keep it and it was no good the following day. And also, you couldn't store it up to use later. So think of this being totally dependent on God. One time, I had surgery on both feet at the same time. So I was in a wheelchair, and my only income was unemployment. And I realized one day that I had no food in my cupboard. I mean, not a piece of bread, not a cracker. I had nothing. And so I was sitting there in my wheelchair thinking about what I'm going to do with nothing there, and I certainly can't get out to get something, when there was a knock on my door. And it was one of my co-workers of whom I didn't know really well. But she said, I don't know why I'm here, but I'm inviting you to dinner with me and my husband. And I readily accepted the invitation. And after I got back, after a great meal and great conversation, I sat down and I said, Lord, thank you for taking care of all my needs. We need to know that we are totally dependent on God. And when we know that we're dependent on God, what does God do? Faithfully meets all our needs. Now, faithfulness today is kind of difficult 
For example, there are all different kinds of churches around. I can remember my first trip down here from the airport to my house here in Hendersonville. And I said to the person driving me, I knew this was supposed to be the Bible Belt, but I didn't know that they were on every corner. <laughs> and I kid you not, count the churches from the airport to here. It's absolutely incredible. And sometimes we don't keep God's word the way it is. We change God's word to fit our situation. So many churches fit the, what they think is God's word into what they think they need. But we are called to understand the word of God. Now, God made a covenant, but the covenant was made with people ages ago. But it still happens today. The covenant is still alive and still needs to be lived. And I want you to know what a covenant is. It's a lifelong love bond. It's a mouthful to say, but think of the meaning. A lifelong love bond. It doesn't say, sometimes you love me. It says, it's a lifetime that you love me. And you don't just love me, it's a bond. And when you bond something, you guys who fix things, how many of you fix things? Some women do too. How many fix things? You, when you bond something, what do you do? You glue it so it can't be separated. Or you screw it so it can't be separated. And that's what God's gift is for us. Imagine what a gift that is, never changing. Now, let's take a look at these images when we view ourselves as being faithful to God, not God being faithful to us. You see, in the Gospel of John, which some of you are aware of because we're studying it in our Bible study, we're told to see ourselves through Jesus' eyes. Woo! What would you look like if you're going to be seen through Jesus' eyes? How would we describe ourselves physically? We've heard and we know that our bodies are God's temple. And that includes our hearts and our hands. Emotionally, to love and develop our ability to pray about reacting to something or someone. And how are we supposed to react? In love. And the third thing is spiritually. How do we incorporate God into our total being? Not just our head and our intellect. Not just our heart learning to love. Not just in our body and our feet moving towards God. We have to look at how these images change when we view ourselves faithful to God. What can we do to become more intimate with God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit? First, we need to trust God's words and promises. Personally, I believe we need to add something to the word faithful. We need to experience our relationship with God, not just being faithful, but being faithful with great faithfulness. Now, one time when I was in Boston, I was a member of a group who did spiritual mentoring or spiritual guiding or whatever you want to call it. And one of the things we had to do is 
go to these meetings and someone has to present their situation in one of their sessions with someone. So this, get, this day I gave my, um, my story and I had a really hard time with working with this person. And I said that and I told them what happened during the session and one fellow in the group turned to me and said, where was God in your session? Where was God in my conversation? Where was God? We know that God always shows us God's faithfulness. So I knew the question was relative to me and not faithfulness to God. And at this point, I pondered not only how I could have guided the person more faithfully, but also how I can use God's faithfulness in everything I do. And in Psalm 117, right book. We read in Psalm 117 these words. Praise the Lord, all your nations. Extol him, all you peoples, for great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Isn't that what we have to do? Praise God. How do we do this? How do we constantly praise God? We have to look at the difference between being faithful and living with great faithfulness. A question we need to ask ourselves constantly and consistently, what is that difference? Constantly, we need to turn to God with all our worship, our gratitude, and love. God loves us every minute, so we know God is always available. And as I said earlier this morning, someone once said to me, God's line is never busy. It's always answered. And so we know that God is always available for us. And we talk with him between our prayers and our praises. Now, consistently, what does that mean? Many of us have rituals like praying in the morning or the afternoon or at night. Some people read scriptures daily, praying for those in the bulletin every day, and my main ritual is praying on the armor of God every morning before I get out of bed. But what happens the rest of the day? We need to be consistently faithful. We need to focus on what God would have us do. This church listened to God when it came time for a new That's when we are faithfully asking God, what do you want of me? What do you want me to do? Oh, by the way, has anyone uh, decided what the hymn is today? My goodness, the early morning crowd couldn't get it at all. Nobody got it. You are a great sleuth. And as you look at the altar, I want you to take a look at the rainbow, whoops, in front of me, which is uh, in the morning you stand down there and it is behind you. And I am a creature of habit. Look at the rainbow because this is God's promise after the flood. 
and also in the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, talks about all the seasons. And so we have grass for the summer, we have colored leaves for the fall, we have a little green tree with snow on it for the winter, and we have flowers for the spring. God provides all creation to us. All creation, every little thing. And we need to remember that because God provides that for us. Now, in Psalm 100, we read, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his goat, goat, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And I just stammered and you haven't said anything. <laughs> we have been having this heckling during the first service, which was fun. Goat. Now, after we read Psalm 100, we know that we have to go further. And I have to tell you, I have a confession to make. I am not a historian. So let me tell you a little bit about Mr. Uh, Chisholm, who wrote the words in this awesome hymn. Thomas Obadiah Chisholm was an American songwriter who wrote several prominent Christian hymns. And believe it or not, he was a neighbor of ours because he was born in a crude log cabin in Franklin, Kentucky on July 29, 1866. Now, without any formal education, he became a teacher at the age of 16. I thought I was young when I started teaching. I was 20, and I had a formal education. He didn't have one, and he started teaching when he was 16. He was an awesome man. At the age of 21, Mr. Chisholm was editor of a hometown weekly newspaper. In 1893, Thomas became a Christian through the uh, ministry of Henry Clay, who was the founder of Asbury College in Kentucky. He then moved to, and I'm going to try to say like a southerner, and I couldn't do it this morning, Louisville? Louisville. Louisville. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to say it the way a northerner would say it. He moved to Louisville, I should say Louisville, where he came, became editor, editor of a Pentecostal Herald. He was ordained a Methodist minister in 1903 and due to health issues, moved his family to Indiana and then to New Jersey. Believe it or not, in 1960. Uh, 16, he began to sell insurance, and he retired in Ocean Grove, New Jersey. By this time, he had written 1,200 poems, of which 800 were published, and many were set to music. So how great is thy faithfulness was a poem that was put to music. How great thou art.
Let me change that. In 1989, Great is Thy Faithfulness was included in the Methodist hymnal. And it's on page 140 if you're interested. Much to our benefit, I believe. And I believe educationally and spiritually, it brings us closer to God. It gives us the information we need to remember to become close to God and to act as God would have us act. You know, when Pastor Jeremy asked me for my favorite hymn, someone else was in the room. Many days later, the person asked me if Great Is Thy Faithfulness really was my favorite hymn. You see, this person knew that it is well with my soul is my favorite hymn today. And that's on page 377. Have you ever compared a, compared a historical hymn with a more modern hymn, sometimes called a song? Well, it is well with my soul also speaks of nature, peace like a river, Sea billows roll, peace that endures. Both hymns talk of trials that will come and that Christ's love and assurance was and continues to be given faithfully. What a God we have. What a God we worship. You see, I believe the two hymns are undeniably related. It's only through great faithfulness that we can witness to it being well with my soul. Many times, I believe, that hymns repeat messages. Other times, they provide a bridge for all Christians and also a road for people searching for the Savior of all people. We cannot overlook the message being for those who don't know the gifts of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Lastly, the words of these hymns are truly for those who want to know Jesus in a new and special way. I hope from the bottom of my heart that when you sing a hymn, when you sing a Christian song, when you listen to a hymn, or listen to a Christian song, you are going to listen with different ears. You're going to experience with different ears. You say, oh, that's easy to stand up there and say. And it is. But it's also something that is attainable. It takes time, it takes effort. Sometimes it's enjoyable when God gives us what we want. You know, there's a story of a little boy who wanted a bicycle for Christmas, and his folks couldn't afford it, so Christmas morning he went down to see what God left him. And his father said, I'm really sorry that God didn't answer your prayers. And the little boy looked at his father and he said, yes, he did. He said no. We don't like to hear no. But sometimes that's the best thing we need to hear. And so we need to be open to everything that God has for us. Now, how great is thy faithfulness, and it is well with my soul. Share the message that Jesus gave his life, that we might have eternal life, and we are to give with great faithfulness to God. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, we read, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. 
Well, I got thinking about that. You know, and I heard someone the other day said, you know, we don't have any laws that we really have to obey. And I said, oh, really? And I said, what if you were speeding down the street? What would happen? Um, well, I probably would get chased by a police officer. I said, that's true. But that's no big deal. And they said, yeah, but I may get a ticket. I said, that's a big deal. That's a law that is being imposed. And so we are not called to share our gifts in a way that is not open to God, open to the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, the power of the Holy Spirit is unmeetable. M-E-E-T. A-B-L-E. You cannot come even with the wonder and the gifts of God. And as we think about the gifts, please think about how to use them and how to show God that you are faithful to God not just God being faithful to us. Amen. Now we're going to um, turn in our hymnals to page 13. I think I've read these words a thousand times. I think I've said these words even more. But they are just so powerful that you never, ever get tired of hearing them and saying them. And let's, let us start with the... Um, with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, by the power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he didn't just give himself up, he gave himself up for us. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of death. I'm 
response or his faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, I ask that you pour forth your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these your gifts of bread and wine. Lord, you broke the bread. You said on that wonderful night, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And the neat thing about that is we have the ability to remember over and over again. And then the Lord took up the cup and he said, this is my body, my blood shed for you. Take and drink in remembrance of me. And that's how we come to this table in remembrance of what Jesus did for the disciples and for every single one of us. God provided for us that we might have healing, have love, experience grace, and total remission of our sins. And so now will the people who are serving please come forward. This table is a table for everyone, not for just United Methodists. Jesus didn't segregate us for any reason. We are allowed to join at this table and experience what God has for us. And come as you're ready. And I the body of Christ broken for you and the gift of life.
you have listened to me. Hopefully God touched your heart and you feel changed. And now what I want to do is have you just feed on something beautiful and something absolutely mind-boggling. And I'm going to ask the um, Good Shepherd Light to come out and introduce yourself. I didn't hear you. <laughs> okay, and these two women are just so gifted, I can't come close to it, so I really appreciate them, and I hope that you will just be moved by their dance. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions. They Oh. 
beautiful when you're not dancing, but you are beautiful when you dance. And I am just so privileged to have you here today, both of you. And now let us go. Let's go forth into the world, telling everybody that we meet, whether they want to hear it or not, that Jesus is faithful and we need to be even more faithful because it is what we're called to do. Amen. Thank you. No, it's a, it's a, um, yeah, stole. It's a stole. This one is from Nicaragua. It's from what? From Nicaragua. Okay. I was just curious what some of the these were. I mean, I recognize the fish from the church, but I wasn't sure what these two were. I don't either. This looks like the bread when the 